Dr. Emil P. Torres is a philosopher who studies eschatology. Eschatology is the study of end times, end of the world, extinction, end of humanity, end of life in general, that sort of thing. Apart from publishing many different articles, research articles and papers, he also recently published a 500 page long book on extinction. The book talks about different thoughts about extinction, the history of those thoughts about extinction, mainly in the Western tradition, different types of extinction, different ways in which extinction can happen and other things. It also talks about goodness and badness, good aspects and bad aspects of extinction and also about right and wrong attitudes towards different ending scenarios we can have during extinction. But if you have seen the thumbnail of this video, you would know that that is not the focus here. Emil recently published an article talking about the reasons why they would not have children. In this video, we want to go through those reasons. We want to see why they are saying that those reasons are not antinatalist reasons. Emil says that they don't agree with antinatalism. And then we'll also see what I think about those reasons. Before going into the reasons why they would not want to have children, Emil starts by presenting a background of the world that we're living in. They start with evaluating the impact of having children into this existing world. This chart, for example, shows the carbon emissions that you can save in metric tons. As you can see, having one fewer child saves about 60 tons of emissions, which is a whopping 30 times more than the next best thing you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. Data and figures like these have made young generations ask questions about having children. About 60% of young people today feel worried about climate change globally. This climate anxiety has led millennials and Gen Zers to choose not to have children. On other animals, human activity has had even wider impact. Global populations of wild vertebrates have declined by 69% since 1971. This includes mammals, birds, fish, amphibians and reptiles. Vertebrates in freshwater environments have declined by 41%. 25% of all plants face extinction today. About 1 million plant and animal species face the threat of extinction, many within decades because of human activity. We have triggered sixth mass extinction in the history of our planet, which is 4 billion years long. Dead zones are the areas where it is impossible for marine life to exist. This map shows the dead zones that we have created across the world. There are even celebrities like Millie Cyrus who have said in 2019, and I quote, We're getting handed a piece of shit planet, and I refuse to hand that down to my child. New York representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, has famously questioned the act of having children. Emil says that there are two considerations, two overlapping considerations in having children. One is the impact of having children on the existing world that we already saw. And other is the kind of world that child is going to inherit, the kind of world in which we are pushing that child into. They cite studies which claim that by end of this century, at least 1 billion people will die prematurely because of climate change and 2 billion people will be displaced. Even those who are lucky to be born in the wealthy countries would still face some real hardships beyond just the stress of reading all of this in the news. There are many other scary prospects beyond climate change, which is just one of the many unprecedented dangers facing humanity in this century. Emil thinks that the probability of a nuclear war happening by end of this century is not unrealistic. If a nuclear war happens, nuclear explosions would create firestorms that will catapult suit into the upper atmosphere. That would block sunlights for years to come. That would result in sub-zero temperatures on the surface of the earth. It will destroy all of the agriculture globally and that would result in mass starvation in the middle of a radioactive hellscape. That is estimated to kill about 5 billion people on this planet. Another threat is the possibility of creation of artificial viruses. If that technology to create artificial pathogens is taken up by terrorists or some bad actors, they can create viruses which are lethal, incurable, very infectious, but take a long time to be detected. They have a very long window period. We have these viruses with individual characteristics today. For example, rabies is lethal, Ebola is incurable, common cold is very infectious, HIV takes a long time to be detected be before we can say that the person has HIV. If you combine all these characteristics into, the, into a single virus and let that out in the public, that will be a very big disaster. Emil says, and I quote, years after initial infection, people on Mars would suddenly 
come down with horrific symptoms flooding emergency rooms for medical assistance and overloading the healthcare system though no help will be available as doctors and nurses too will have become infected artificial intelligence is another threat emil says is realistic and we don't have to imagine some sci-fi fictional scenario where machines have taken over the entire world and they are destroying humans the systems that we have today are enabling and empowering authoritarian regimes to control surveil and manipulate populations this helps those in power today to drive their own hypercharged political propaganda and to manipulate people's thinking through disinformation and discriminatory biases so that is the state of the world that we are living in but emil says that their reasons to not have children go beyond just the state of the world the climate change the all these possibility of disasters they have their own reasons and let's have a look at what those reasons are by their own account emil says that they are quite cheerful and optimistic person as a child it was their curiosity rather than anxiety which drove them to ask questions and explore the world but as they came to know that there are millions of people starving to death there are child cancers brain tumors they started to doubt if this world was really a good place to be in they constructed a hypothesis which they call schopenhauerian hypothesis which claim that this world is really an awful place it is a bad place that is the hypothesis and emil says that next 30 years of their life was spent just to disprove this hypothesis that became the biggest project of their life but growing up and experiencing life emil faced many obstacles to prove this hypothesis wrong they cite friends which have been through very unfortunate situations one of the best friends met with a horrible accident was in icu for many days and then later on felt very very lonely many of their friends have died in excruciating circumstances involving messy relationships they say that on several occasions they themselves had to go through extreme physical pain they have chronic health problems they also had an abusive marriage because of which they ended up bedridden for 6 months in other relationships they had to experience a lot of emotional cruelty this had led them to extrapolate their own suffering on to others to imagine and recognize what other people must be going through they also claim studies which say that loneliness is now reaching pandemic levels this has led them to believe that this world is not a good place in their own words and i quote an honest look at the state of the world i believe reveals that this place is a nightmare a disaster zone for many a torture chamber and so with these obstacles emil says that they have profoundly failed in proving <laughs> schopenhauer and hypothesis wrong emil imagines a thought experiment where before they were born somebody asked them would you like to be born would you like to come into this world to which emil would have responded and i quote in their own words that world those experiences are you mad have you lost your damn mind and good and so there is no justification for emil to have their own children precisely because emil says i love the children who i could have brought into this world now you would think that these are antinatalist reasons this is antinatalism antinatalism after all in this context is a view that it is irrational and immoral to procreate to have children to bring sentient beings into existence but emil says that this is not antinatalism their reasons are not antinatalistic reasons they say that their reasons to not have children only make sense to them and they recognize that other people may not feel the same they also say that these reasons are specific to these conditions and they cannot be applied universally although they have some cases where they would reject the reasons for having children universally for example they say that people who have children out of eugenics because they think that their genes are superior by some criteria to others that reason they reject universally to have children they also reject the reasons to uh, bring people into existence as a means to increase or maximize happiness in this world these things they reject universally but other than that they say that their reasons cannot be applied universally and therefore they are not antinatalistic so to summarize the future is too scary to gamble upon and this present world is a broken place and therefore ml is child free this raises the question of why this is not antinatalism i could deduce two reasons why ml might be saying that this is not antinatalism one that their reasons apply only to this world there might be other worlds which might not be as broken as bad as this world and therefore their reasons might not apply and because of that their reasons are not universal and therefore it is not antinatalism or second it is emil's perspective 
which is telling them that this is a broken or bad place and other people might not see the world as badly as Emil sees and therefore it is not antinatalism and therefore Emil is only child free. Those I think are the two reasons Emil is presenting why they are saying that it is not antinatalism. And I'm not convinced these are enough reasons to say that these reasons are not antinatalism. Even before humans started creating all these problems, look at the history, look at human history itself which is studied with wars disease, starvation, malnourishment, injustice, infant mortality and other horrors. If you look at the world beyond humans, it is even more horrible. Predation, disease, starvation, parasitism, extinction, stress, death are more common than we generally think and this has been going on for millions of years crushing billions of sentient beings under the juggernaut of natural selection. The problem is, if there has to be a world with life similar to what we see around, then there could not have been any other world which is different than what we have today. In words of Richard Dawkins, and I quote, In a universe of electrons and selfish genes, blind physical forces and genetic replication, some people are going to get hurt, other people are going to get lucky, and you won't find any rhyme or reason in it, nor any justice. The universe that we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at bottom, no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. End quote. So to point to a distinction between this real world and some hypothetical nice world in order to say that your reasons are not antinatalism reasons don't really convince me. The same thing can be said about perspective. It is really unfortunate that Emil had to go through such horrible circumstances in their personal life. But that is not required for us to recognize that the, the condition that we live in, this sentient condition, the world that we live in, is not a very good place to be in. A stoic observation, an observation done from a distance is enough to come to conclusion that it is both irrational and immoral to bring more sentient beings into this world. Now, I am open to correction if I have inferred something wrong about what Emil is saying. And I like and respect Dr. Emil's work very much their style of writing, their way of thinking. And I'm very happy that Dr. Emil is not going to have any children. Whatever floats one's boat, as long as they don't bring new sentient beings onto this sinking ship. 